Hey guys, my name is Nikib. Welcome back to the channel. Um, so in this video, it's going to be kind of personal. Uh, it's going to be more of a longer video, and I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, if you guys uh, don't want to watch this video, I might be a little bit graphic as far as my explaining things go. So you guys don't have to watch this one. Um, you know, just check in with the next one, I guess. Um, but in this video, I wanted to kind of discuss... Um, Crohn's, Crohn's disease. Some of you guys might know what Crohn's disease is. Some of you guys might not know. Um, Crohn's disease is a chronic illness, and you know, which means there's no cure for it. You can go into remission, um, depending on how well you take care of yourself, depending on the stuff you eat, you know, stuff like that. I, I do apologize, guys. I have a stuffy nose. Um, so I'm going to be talking about my journey with Crohn's. Um, and I'm going to give you guys kind of like a timeline. Like I said, this is going to be a longer type of video and it's going to be pretty personal. Um, I'm going to try to describe exactly what I went through, but it's been about over two years now. So I might be forgetting some facts. So I do apologize. But the reason I'm making this video is because this channel is mainly to kind of document my life. That's what I wanted to do with this channel. And also just share information um, as I, you know, go through life and come across things. So um, I feel like this is important. I really wanted to make a video about this for a while. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's like 2 a.m. right now and I just had the guts to do it. So let's get into it. So um, I got diagnosed in late October or early November of 2019. Um so 2019 was probably the best year of my life and also the worst year of my life. Um, in 2019, I, I think I was, what was I, a junior in college? I was actually flying through college. I was on set to graduate a year and a half early. Um, and yeah, um, I was in healthcare IT, um, was going to work in a hospital. And, you know, it's funny because I ended up in a hospital, <laughs> uh, not working there, but as a patient. But um started off the year I was in peak physical shape I was always a skinny guy um, I didn't hit a hundred pounds till sophomore year of high school so that tells you guys how much how skinny I was um, so I, I was as of as of tw like I think May of 2019 I was 126 pounds so that was a lot for me I had never been that heavy 126 pounds. I was hitting the gym twice a week. Um, I do. I'm noticing that my camera's kind of glitching. I, I I apologize for that, but um, yeah. So I was, you know, I was at peak, um, and I felt great for me personally. I thought I looked pretty decent without a shirt. I had never had that much muscle on me. Um, uh, yeah. So in May, so I'm Muslim, right? So if you guys know what Ramadan is, um, so you, during Ramadan, right, you fast during the day. And during sunset, you break your fast and you have dinner. Um, so in May of 2019, that's when Ramadan was. I think it was May. That's when I started f feeling these weird feelings in my stomach. Um, so I'm Desi, right? Uh, which means, if you guys don't know, Desi means like South Asian. Um, or that's my, that's my lineage. Um, South Asians are referred to as Desi, you know, like brown people. Um, and one dish that is commonly served in like, uh, that part of the world, or even like Arabia, is a dish called biryani. It's like this really spicy type of like rice uh, with like mutton or chicken. Um, so we had that during one day, like when we broke our fast. Um, and we would break our fast at like a mosque, meet up with some friends and stuff like that. So it was one day, we broke our fast, and I just had this weird feeling in my stomach after I ate that biryani. Like, um, it's not really like an upset stomach t sort of feeling. It's like a feeling like imagine you're you haven't eaten all day and you just chugged hot sauce like a burning sensation. That's what I was feeling. And I, I don't know. I, I, I eventually got over it. You know, a couple hours later, I was fine. I just drank some water and it was all good. Right. Um, so the next day we went back, you know, had biryani to break fast again and the same feeling. And at that point, I kind of told my dad, I'm like, I think something's wrong. And he said, you know, okay, um, let's let's give it a little bit more time. Let's see what happens. Give it another few days. And if you see that you're still feeling like that, we'll go to see a doctor. So 
it continued um, and so we ended up going to my primary care um, my normal primary care dude he was out for like leave or something he was sick or I don't know what the cause was so there was this other lady filling in for him so I didn't know this lady so she said yeah I think you have ulcers so she said take Nexium and if you guys know Nexium if you guys have ever uh, written the uh, read the fine print on Nexium it says don't take for more than 14 days unless otherwise specified by, by a doctor because that stuff's that stuff's hard on your kidneys I ended up taking Nexium for three months so you know like throughout the entirety of it so this started in May right and it progressed and got worse and worse throughout the summer. So eventually, my primary care said, okay, listen, let's get an endoscopy done. Let me send you to a gastroenterologist and let's see what's going on in your stomach because obviously this Nexium isn't helping. And it just got worse. And I actually started to throw up at that point. And you guys can, you know, feel free to cluck off if I'm being explicit. But so I started to throw up and I, I just had, but I could still keep food down. Like I, I wasn't, I, I was losing weight because I was throwing up, but it wasn't like horrible at that point. Um, so I started throwing up more and more. I got my endoscopy done. And the, the first thing, I mean, this doctor was, this doctor was, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to call him stupid, but obviously he's a doctor, but the guy literally said, okay, dude, you need surgery. And I'm like, that, that's it. <laughs> You're not going to tell me what happened. Tell me what you saw. And it's just, no, you just need surgery, uh, set up an appointment and we'll get it done. I'm like, that's not how this works, dude. So obviously we, we got, wanted to get a second opinion. We ended up seeing like three or four different gastroenterologists over the next few months. Finally, we found this one that had really good reviews. And I'm going to just say those reviews were absolute crap because this guy, once again, he's a doctor, so I don't want to say he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But I feel like he was way too arrogant to admit that he didn't know what he was talking about um, because I did a total of, I think, seven endoscopies with this dude. And every single time he would change up the explanation, he would give me more pills and say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what it is. And every time I would say, dude, I'm not getting better. It's just getting worse. And at that point I was significantly losing weight. Come August, I think, um, he finally, it was, no, no, this is September on my birthday. Uh, <laughs> I woke up, I, I woke up to a call. And he says, yo, I just looked at your last endoscopy and I'm s sorry to say this, but I think you have cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer. And at that point I was, I felt defeated. I, I didn't even, I like, I didn't cry or, didn't cry or anything at that point. I like, like I said, I just woken up, but just imagine this. It's your birthday, right? You woke up and you, you got told you have cancer. So I didn't know what to think. Obviously when we went in for a checkup and a follow up and to make sure what was going on. And so he says, yeah, I think I see a lump or a mass, you know, alongside your pancreas. Um, I'm like, you didn't, you did like an endoscopy. How did you, but whatever. Um, oh, we also did several MRIs throughout the, throughout the process with that dude. Um, but he would send me off to a clinic um, and it wouldn't be a normal MRI. So if you guys have ever had an MRI with extract or extract, no, 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 no. Contrast, my bad. <laughs> um, they just sound so similar. Contrast, basically you would, they would inject barium, the element barium. So it's this like really uh, chalky white liquid. They inject that into you at a really high pressure. Oh my goodness. It feels like your veins are about to burst. I could still feel the tingling when they, so one day, I mean, I had to go through that several times and every single time I would say, turn the pressure down because it, it literally feel like it feels like your veins are bursting, but that stuff is really potent on your digestive system. Um, that would like back you up for like days afterwards so i hated doing that but that really didn't reveal anything so he finally said listen i think it's something to do with your pancreas um i'm gonna refer you to a specialist at emory so i live in georgia i live in atlanta georgia so emory is a big thing here emory hospital i've never had a good experience with emory hospital we did end up going to the emergency room one time and they did the barium extract and everything and um uh, nothing or contrast and nothing really showed up i went home later that night four hours later so I said, yeah, no, I'm not going to go to Emory. I looked up um, pancreatic specialists in our area, and I found a really good one, or as far as the reviews go, to, go a really good one at Northside Hospital. So I was like, you know what? Let me take the chance. I went to see the guy, and 
I was I was 83 pounds at that point. I don't know how I was walking. Um, think about it. A 20 year old, 83 pounds, right? So I was severely underweight. I couldn't keep food down at all. I would eat something and immediately throw it up. And the dude looked at me like the guy at Northside, right? The specialist. And he says, listen, man, I used to be a gastroenterologist back in the nineties. I've been doing this for a while, but you, you need to, you need to be admitted to the hospital or like right away. You're, you're, I'm surprised you're not dead. And at that point, for me, I don't really tell a whole lot of people this, but this is for my documentation's sake. I had pretty much accepted the fact that I was going to die. You know, like I had made peace. I'm not, this sounds like, this is going to make me sound like a shitty person, but I'm not one to really apologize about stuff, when, especially when I think I'm in the right. But I remember I, I told my friends and everything and stuff like hey like if i if i ever wronged you you know like i'm I'm sorry and i i had made peace like i thought i was gonna die um and i remember right before i got admitted like a couple take take this back a few days before that day that i saw the specialist right um i don't know if i mentioned this i don't think i mentioned this so during 2019 the the part the good part of it being my best year of my life was um as a kid as growing up as a teenager i always um, looked up to these YouTubers who um, like drop shift or like resold stuff. And I always wanted to give that a try. And you know what? I had three grand saved up in January and I said, screw this. Let me just give it a try. And me and my dad went garage selling one day and I found like a Game Boy or something and I sold it for like three times what it went for. And I'm like, I think I could turn this into something. And so the next Saturday, me and a couple friends loaded into my car and from then on, most Saturdays, unless it was raining, we would come back with the stockpile of stuff in our car. And that feeling of unpacking what you got and reselling it, dude, I was making some decent money. I didn't need a job. Like, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but like that, that paid my bills and I was fine with it. And then, so you guys can see this in my background, right? I paid next to nothing for a lot of this stuff. Some Sometimes people leave comment on, comments on my Instagram like, cool cool stuff, right? You must have paid a fortune. No, dude, I paid pennies for a lot of this stuff. Um, and this isn't what my collection used to look like. Like back before I got admitted to the hospital, my collection was so big. Like if you look at pictures of my room, um, I, if I could find some, I'll post it. If not, then oh well. It looked like a GameStop. Like even uh, my friends would always come over and say like, dude, you look your room looks like a GameStop. And that's how much stuff I had in there. And before I got admitted to the hospital, I'm like, I started having like this mental breakdown and I accepted the fact that, like I said, I accepted the fact that I was going to die. Um, and I, I, I told myself, you know what, if I make it out the hospital, I'm going to destroy everything. Like I'm, I'm just going to tread everything as far as like my games and stuff go. So, um, I get admitted. And so I told my doctor, like, I, I know you want me to get admitted right now. And this is going back to that day, right? So I said, let me just go home and grab some stuff. Let me grab my toothbrush. Let me grab some clothes. And he says, okay, fine, but come back as soon as possible. We need to get you on drip line. So I go home. By that time, my aunt had found out that I was getting admitted. And my aunt had called my other aunt and they all showed up at my door and they actually went with me to the hospital. As soon as I got out of the car, I fell over. So they had to get a wheelchair. That's how weak I was. Um, they had to get a wheelchair and wheel me inside. And by that point, I was still trying to keep down solid food, even though I couldn't. And I, as I was wheeling, wheeling inside, getting wheeled inside, I was like, I saw McDonald's um, in the bottom floor. And I said, yo, dad, can you buy me a filet of fish? So he bought me a filet of fish. And as I was about to take a bite out of it up in the room, the doctor comes over and saying, yo, you're not supposed to be eating solid foods. I'm like, please, let me just finish the burger. So he let me finish the burger. Um, and he says, no more solid foods. They put me on a drip line that tested me for TB, came back negative. But the drip line is basically when they put like a catheter into your, your arm. And it's, if you guys have, just type in drip line, you guys will see. Um, but it's fluids to get you back hydrated. And I gained a couple pounds within the next few days. I was in the hospital for two weeks. So they ran tests and stuff like that. They did two endoscopies while I was in the hospital. The first one, just to see what was going on. And luckily, I'm very thankful for this north side. I've had nothing but good experiences from there. The team of doctors... On the second endoscopy, so they looked in and basically my intestines, like um, it was somewhere along he- between here and my stomach, it was swollen to the point where like, it, it was like this, can, can y'all see that? The hole was like this, t- like 
that tiny, where only liquids, a certain amount of liquids could pass. No solid food could pass. So the doctor said, I don't want to take a risk with this. Um, they have like this balloon thing where it, it can actually clear blockages. It'll go in the hole and expand. They can pump it from the outside and expand. This could have ended up in two ways. He could have, she could have ruptured my intestines um, or everything could have turned out fine. So she says, I'm not going to try this. But then the doctor's assistant said, let me try this. So he went ahead and put the balloon in and he expanded it. And luckily my intestines didn't burst. He cleared the blockage. Um, and oh my goodness, dude, the amount of food I ate those next few days, I gained six pounds in two days. Um, I had several meals those next two days, man. I don't know how much I ate. Um, the hospital would give you when they put me back on solid foods, I would, I would have three trays of food per meal. Um, and some snacks in between and stuff like that. Um, and I finally started to get better and, but we still hadn't figured out what the issue was. We thought it was a blockage. And then by the end, there was another blockage sort of appearing. So they gave me some meds and here's a funny story. Uh, the doctor said, listen, if you're in a lot of pain, let me know and we'll, we'll give you something to use the pain. And one time I was, I was just laying there in the hospital bed and my stomach really started to burn. Right. So build up a stomach acid started taking place. And I, I called the doctor, you know, hit the red button and doctor showed up and said, what can I do? I said, I, I'm in a lot of pain right now. So by that time she had put me on a pick line. Oh my goodness. Um, if you guys can see, can y'all see that, that, that spot right there? That it's really gone now, but that spot is where they inserted the pick line. It's basically like a tube. They stick up your vein and into like your heart area. And it like that way they don't have to keep sticking you with catheters, right? Um, that's how they would feed you. That's how, or like, you know, give you nourishment, uh, give you any, whatever the heck they need to give you any medication, um, so she came over and stuck, you know, like a little syringe into the pick line and like my aunt was there and I started laughing. I, I, I couldn't control myself. I'm just laughing and I, I do apologize. My hair is all over the place, guys. But I started laughing uncontrollably. I'm like, what, what? I'm like, why am I laughing? And the doctor's like, oh, yeah, I just hit you with some, I forgot, some narcotics. That's what she said. And I'm like, dude, this is why people are addicted to this stuff. Um, so uh oh my goodness now i know right i felt like i was flying but um time passes and eventually um the second week i got a diagnosis they said listen you have crohn's disease and so i didn't know what that was i've i had heard about it i didn't know what it was stuff like that they explained it to me said you know um basically you're i what i forget i'm stupid guys the white blood cells i think are the ones that defend yeah, so the white blood cells, so the doctor said you have an abnormal count of white blood cells. You have way too many, and they, they're trying to attack your red blood cells. They think you're sick, but you're really not. So that's why, you know, your body's attacking itself, essentially. So um, doctor explained to him medication and said, yeah, you're going to be put on, they put me on a total of 11 pills starting out of the hospital. And they said in two weeks, you're going to have a nurse that's going to come to your house and explain Humira. Some of you guys might know Humira. I don't really have a Humira pen on me right now. It's upstairs. It's basically a steroid injection. And I have to take that every two weeks. If I skip a Humira thing, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that I went a solid three months without Humira. And I, I was actually doing really well. I was doing really well. And then funny enough, as soon as I hit that, like posted that the very next week, I was sick, like really sick. I had a really bad um, relapse. Um, and ever since then, I said, I'm not going to stop taking my hair mirror. But anyways, out of the hospital, the doctor explained, listen, you know, this is this is what it is. You're going to have to have checkups. This is a non, non-curable disease. No one's ever been cured. Um, and, you know, there's things like IBS, IBD. They're really similar, but you have Crohn's. Um, Crohn's can span anywhere from your, your mouth to your anus, <laughs> literally like anywhere. The most common type of Crohn's is like lower down in like your larger intestines. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, but usually you hear about people who have Crohn's, they have, they have to use the bathroom a lot. For me, my Crohn's not so much. My Crohn's is a little bit higher up. So for me, it's 
I throw up, you know, usually I don't have an issue with using the bathroom. You know, my bathroom is totally normal. Um, but I throw up like it, several times at work. I have tried to ca keep myself from throwing up on customers. <laughs> it sounds really weird, but um, luckily I was wearing a mask and I was able to hold it in. But over the over the months, I've gotten really good at holding my um, reflux in. But for me, I, I have excess stomach acid and it really does burn sometimes over the time of me being diagnosed for over two years now. Um, I've learned what I can and can't eat for the most part, but I'm still learning guys like some and what really confuses me is sometimes I'll eat something and I'll be fine Like I'm not bloated or anything But sometimes I'll eat that exact same thing and I, I just have a terrible day and Crohn's is a silent disease not a silent disease an invisible disease right co-workers and you'll hear a lot of people with Crohn's saying this same story like um, People always say like you don't look sick. Well, that's kind of the point, <laughs> you know, I'm I, yeah, you know, like if you guys are looking at me for the first time, I might look like a healthy person besides the crazy hair. But, you know, unfortunately, I do have this disease and it affects me every single day. Um, so I left the hospital and I'm, I'm kind of skipping all the places. I do apologize if you guys can f keep track. Props to you. But I left the hospital in early November. I remember I had missed the, the Borderlands launch, I think, or... I might be getting my times messed up, but I remember I, I'd been waiting for the Borderlands 3 launch for forever and Medieval came out and my buddy, one of my buddies bought me Medieval. He came up to the hospital and bought me, bought me Medieval and I thought that was a, the nicest thing. Um, a lot of my friends were supportive and I do appreciate every single one of them. Um, and I, I just thank God that I survived. So the thing is when I got out of the hospital, it didn't really hurt me. Like it, it the reality didn't really set in of like what how this was going to affect my life up until i would say january so covid had just started up you know we were hearing murmurs in the news and people were freaking out so going back to my old business i was too weak still at that point to really go garage selling and at that point i needed the money to pay for you know bills and stuff like that so i was like you know what let me get a job i need to get out the house and start moving a little bit so i applied to office depot and I'd gotten laid off of Sears two years earlier, um, and I really enjoyed that job. But that'll that'll come into play. The reason why I'm bringing that up that'll come into play in a little bit. So um, I got hired at Office Depot, and at the time I was watching a lot of anime. There's a reason why I'm also telling you guys this because I'm a slice of life kind of person. Some of you guys might be like action anime fans. I'm I'm really not. Like I'll, I I watch Fairy Tale and all that mess, but like I like slice of life. Um, and that's in January is when I really started getting into it. That was my escape from Crohn's and my daily life and my daily struggles. Um, and I would watch slices of life and I was, I would think like, dude, their world is just so perfect. And like, here I am, like I'm screwed. I'm like, right. I'm like broken. And I, I, I'm not afraid to admit it. Like oftentimes I would just sit awake at night and just cry. Like my life is screwed up. Like what's going to happen to me now? And Cause like for, for me, I always wanted kids and I wanted to have a family early on and you know, um, I had plans, you know, and that everything just got set back. Um, I had to take a gap year from school that, you know, I was set to graduate a year and a half early. That was no more. Um, everything just changed and Best Buy, not Best Buy, Office Depot was the most depressing job I had ever had. And that was just making it worse. And at that point, I had never before then. I had never really had depression. Um, I, I had always had OCD, but my OCD kind of came and went. Like the severity of it, like when I would tick, um, like I would start doing things with my eyes and like kind of like clawing at my hands whenever whenever I would get nervous or whatever. But a lot of that stuff really, I would I would see like I would have pieces of skin missing, and I wouldn't even feel that I was doing it, or like I would like chew pieces of my like the inside of my mouth out or whatever the case may be. Um, and it really started getting bad. And cause I would look at those, I probably already said this, I'm kind of rambling, but like I would look at those anime as a perfection and in my life. And then I said, screw this. I literally just quit one day. Um, I walked out and I applied to home Depot and the fact that I'd work at Sears as a garden associate, they hired me on the spot. So home Depot is really what helped me turn things around. I, I think, at Home Depot, I got the extra exercise in. Um, so I slowly started to get physically better. The exercise really helped me because before I was kind of like cooped up in one spot 
doing absolutely nothing or like at home laying on my bed. So like I was having a lot more better days because with Crohn's, you never know. Some days you'll have an amazing day and you'll just have your fingers crossed and think like, please let me make this day a productive day. Um, and some days I would just have awful days and um, you just, you don't want to get out of bed. And I was still th- keep in mind, well, I was not throwing up at that point. Um, it wasn't up until a lot later where I started throwing up again. Um, but Home Depot really did it for me. I, I think I got a lot better, um, like spiritually and emotionally and stuff like that. But then um, uh, I think summer of 2020, I started throwing up again and I went back to see my doctor. And I'm going to be honest, I was still learning and I, I wasn't taking my meds properly. At that point, I had started taking Humira, but I, w- I wasn't that great at tracking my two week period. And every single time I would miss a little bit, I would, I would start relapsing and throwing up again. So, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys probably saw that post I posted a couple months ago, um, where I was, I went three months without taking any injections or pills or anything like that. And right after that, the very next week I went to crap, like literally everything went to shit, right? (laughs) Like, um, I was, I was feeling amazing. And then I had this massive relapse um, I was in bed. I had a call out and stuff like that. So ever since then, I promised myself I would take my Humira and I would never miss um, my set schedule of Humira. So that's where I'm currently at. At the moment, I'm not currently taking any pills, even though my doctor um, says I should. Um, but for me, I've kind of found like a rhythm where I can kind of juggle my diet um, and Humira. And for the most part, I would say I'm pretty de- in a good spot right now. I, I've learned to control my reflexes and it's not even that often anymore. You know, uh, it's pretty rare. Like maybe I'll have the urge to throw up, you know, a couple times a week now, whereas and it was several times a day before. Um, and as soon as long as they take my humor, I'm fine. Um, obviously, with Crohn's, I have to check in with my doctor, have my schedule, you know, maintain it. Um, my nurse calls me once a month, uh, checks in with me and make sure everything's OK. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm, I actually have an appointment with my doctor coming up soon. So um, we're going to see where I'm at. So I need to do my endoscopy. And hopefully there's no new uh, flare-ups or anything. I don't feel any blockages at the moment. I'm feeling pretty decent. Um, but the reason I... Let's just summarize kind of like the reason I'm going to make this video more so like the emotional aspect, right? Like I told you guys, it's 2 o'clock right now and the video is almost 30 minutes long. Um, it's because... Tonight I was I was literally just sitting here and overthinking it again. It it really takes a toll on you emotionally. I know in friends uh, or friends of friends who have had this disease and um it, like it's hard to hold down a solid relationship if you look at the statistics of like people with Crohn's. It, it's not so great as far as relationships go, right? You you know your partner might leave you or whatever the case. And oftentimes you get into a relationship, right? You'll have your ups and downs and you, they'll, you'll, you'll explain to them that, Hey, you know, like I might end up in the hospital. I might go through rough patches, you know, and oftentimes, you know, people, you, there will be understanding people. Um, and they'll say, Hey, let's get through this together. Some people will just, you know, dump you on the spot, whatever the case may be. But, um, right now, you know, I'm just in, I'm just kind of doing me living day to day. Uh, trying to perfect myself, trying to better myself. So that's kind of my story. I, If any of you guys can relate to, you know, what I went through, or if you guys have your own Crohn's or IBS or IBD stories, please let me know. Um, I feel like uh, silent or invisible diseases like this uh, need more recognition just so that you don't have people saying, hey, you, you don't look sick, even though you might have a shitty day, right? You, you're feeling terrible but you look fine and people don't realize that. So it's about community building. I, I, I've joined a couple groups. Um, it's not really AA, but it's, it's similar to AA where, you know, people with similar diseases come together and they discuss, you know, and, you know, they share their experiences. So if any of you guys want to follow me on Instagram or even want to talk or discuss, um, and if you guys don't want to leave it down, this, you know, in the comments, feel free to DM me. I'm going to leave my Instagram down um, below in the description. So, yeah, um, that's about it. If you guys want to see uh, future videos or if you guys have any ideas of future videos that I should make, uh, leave them down in the comment section below as well. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in my next one.